by a whole range of environments that we never thought possible before. The tenacity of life here in Earth's most extreme environments encourages many biologists to believe that life may be remarkably widespread throughout the universe. I think the chances of finding life elsewhere in our solar system are pretty good. Sometimes I say, well, maybe 50-50, but I have to be honest, I don't really know how to put a probability on it. But I think anywhere where we had liquid water and the right organic compounds present, we've certainly had more than enough time to originate biological systems. The probability is probably pretty good. For most of Earth's history, the only living things were microbes. As they search the universe, scientists expect to find planets crawling with microbial life long before they find one with intelligent life. Instead of meeting little green men, they're much more likely to meet little green slime. Our quest to discover life on other worlds began optimistically in the 1960s when a flotilla of spacecraft headed for our neighboring planet, Mars. But their cameras revealed only craters and extinct volcanoes. Mars seemed a barren and lifeless world. This gloomy assessment was reinforced in 1976 when two Viking craft landed on the rocky Martian surface. They scooped up soil samples and analyzed them for any signs of microbial life. The results were negative. Mars seems extremely hostile to life. The average temperature is minus 53 degrees Celsius, and the thin atmosphere provides no barrier to the sun's deadly ultraviolet rays. Even the rocks contain chemicals that can destroy living cells. But the idea of finding life on Mars continues to obsess many scientists. When Bruce Joukowsky started his research career, Viking had just landed. Viking went, it looked for life, it found none. And there was a real sense that there must be only one planet in our solar system that could support life, and that was the Earth. Things have changed dramatically since then, in particular, the revolutions in terrestrial biology and the possibility that life could have originated in some of these extreme environments. Close-up pictures of the red planet have revealed tantalizing evidence that water once flowed across the surface of Mars. We see clear geological evidence that there's been water on Mars. On some of the older surfaces, we see networks of valleys that look like river tributary systems where waters flowed through them and carved these long channels. The availability of water at the surface or in the crust really, I think, is what makes it possible for life to be there. The evidence came sooner than expected. On August the 7th, 1996, NASA called an unprecedented news conference. These scientists had examined a meteorite that had come from Mars and discovered something very strange lurking inside. One of the microbiologists on the team was Dave McKay. Uh, we have a number of forms which it is very tempting for us to interpret as Martian microfossils. The NASA team had been alerted by chemical residues in the rock that here on Earth can only be made by microbes. Then they picked out strange worm-like structures that looked like tiny fossilized life forms. It all began with a unique discovery on the snowy wastes of Antarctica. 
Each year, a meteorite survey team sets off across the Antarctic ice cap. Meteorites fall all over the Earth, but here the small dark rocks are easy to spot on the pure white ice. In 1984, the team picked up one meteorite, ALH 84001, that was to completely change our view of life in the universe. It wasn't until nine years later that researchers discovered that the survey team had brought back a lump of Mars, a rock formed 4.5 billion years ago. Its origin was proved by traces of gas which exactly matched the composition of the Martian atmosphere measured by the Viking landers. This is an incredibly complex rock. It's much more complex than we first realized. It's more complex than most earth rocks that people study. And this rock has been studied more than any rock in the history of the world. Some scientists believe the microscopic structures are natural crystals. But for McKay, the case for Martian life grows ever stronger. These are fossils of little tiny bacteria, single cell organisms. They're not bones. They're little tiny cells that have turned to minerals. They're fossilized. But they look exactly like fossils from earth rocks. But the only way to find out for certain if there's ever been life on Mars is to go there and collect a sample. NASA missions in 2003 and 2005 will collect rocks from the red planet and then return them to Earth where they'll be dissected for fossils. The surface of Mars is the same area as all the continents of Earth combined. There's an enormous choice of possible sites when it comes to collecting the priceless samples. Mojave Desert in California is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. This dry lake bed was once covered in water. Its parched surface is the perfect place for Chris McKay to research where NASA should collect its first samples in order to look for fossils of microbes that once lived on Mars. This lake bed is the sort of place we'd be looking for on Mars, is a place to search for evidence of past life. It's a nice, big, easy to find target, easy to land in, easy to drive around on, easy to drill in. If there had been water in a lake like this on Mars, anything living in it, as it died, would settle to the bottom and we'd be able to find it in the sediments. Here in the Mojave Desert, we might dig under the surface and find evidence of life that's just a few years old. But on Mars, these sediments would be three and a half to four billion years old. And we'd be looking for evidence of life that was on that planet when it was more like the Earth, when it had water. 